Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark, and we are in Mark chapter 1. We're starting verse 24 this lesson, but before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, as we begin verse 24, we go back to, to last lesson, verse 23, and it says, and there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out. So immediately when Jesus finishes his teachings, uh, this man with the unclean spirit gets up, and the spirit within him, because as we said, that the spirit was inside of him. The Greek brings out that the spirit was inside of this man, and the spirit is speaking out. It's not the man, but it's the spirit within him that is speaking out to Jesus. And he says in verse 24, saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. Now, it says, what have we to do with thee? Now, this was a common, this expression, what have we to do with thee? Is a, was a common expression in the Old Testament. And it implies that the two parties referred to do not have the same interests. Therefore, this demon is basically saying, you and we have nothing in common with each other. We do not want you here, and what do you want with us? We have nothing in common. So what do you want with us? Because we don't want you here. This is what the demon is basically saying. Satan's kingdom believes that they have a right to possess and influence anyone who is in bondage to his will. But Jesus came to set at liberty those who are in bondage. So basically, in a sense, it's kind of like the demon saying, what are you doing here, Jesus? I have a right. This man is an unbeliever, and he's not one of your children. So I have a right to possess this man. So what are you doing here? We have nothing in common, right? So he says here, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Are you come to destroy us? Are you come to destroy us? Now, the demon was in, was in the process of destroying this man. And now, as Jesus approaches, this demon sees his tormentor coming. The word us can refer to the demon and the man, or... It can refer to many more demons that are also inside this man, as in Mark, I'm sorry, as in Matthew chapter 8, verse 29. In Matthew 8, 29, they know that there is a set time appointed for their eternal, for their eternal torment in the lake of fire. Jesus who is of Eve's seed, has both authority and power to bruise and to destroy Satan's works. And in this case, he will command this demon to release his power and his control over this man. So, as I said earlier, the demons know of a certainty the coming judgment and torment that will be for all those who oppose Christ. They know about it. They know it's true. The demons know that the lake of fire is an absolute place. Have they seen it? I don't know. Do they know about it? Yeah, they know about it. But they know that they have an eternal punishment coming forever and ever. Satan's kingdom has done a great job deceiving the lost world into thinking that either 
Number one, either there is no God, therefore there is no judgment. Or number two, if the God of the Bible does exist, well, then he is a loving and forgiving God and he'll take us all to heaven, right? Or number three, God may punish us, but it won't be for all of eternity. And Satan's kingdom has deceived the unbelievers of this world into believing those things. One of those things, right? God's loving and kind. He'd never punish us. And if he did, eh, it wouldn't be forever. I mean, he made us. He does love us. The Bible says he loves the world, right? Jesus said, for God so loved the world. So if he loves us, I guess he'll take us to heaven eventually anyways, right? He's forgiving. Or there is no God in the first place, so we don't have to worry about any kind of judgment. Satan's kingdom has done a great job in deceiving the unsaved people of this world. I don't know what you believed before you got saved, but uh, now you know that, that eternal judgment is real. Remember, as, as I said before, um, lessons ago, uh, Jesus spoke twice as much about hell as he did about heaven. And the reason is because hell is a real place. And people go there when they die. People will go there when they die. To Jesus, hell is a real place. And if hell is real, then the lake of fire is also real. Let the unsaved world take heed to what this demon says. At the end of the age, God will, he will completely destroy everyone who has rejected him and his son and his word. When I say completely destroy, I don't mean God makes them so that they cease to exist. No, no. They will exist, right? Ecclesiastes 3.14, whatsoever God does, he does forever. God made us, we are eternal beings, whether that's eternal in heaven or eternal in the lake of fire. So God will, he absolutely will destroy those who reject him and his word and his son. And the demons know it's true, but they've done a great job. Satan's kingdom's done a great job in deceiving unbelievers in this world that it's not true. And he says here, verse 24, are you come to destroy us? And then he says, I know who you are. I know who you are. Of course, of course, this demon knew who knew him when he was when he was with the other angels in heaven before before Satan rebelled. Right? When he says, I know who you are, this this demon recognizes Jesus. And he recognizes them because he knows of who he was before he fell, when he was in heaven. He remembers the glory and the majesty that exists in heaven at this time. He remembers all of the angelic activities that he was involved in, in heaven, before he decided to take Lucifer's side against God. They remember. They remember their existence in heaven before they, they decided to take Lucifer's side against God. Oh, he definitely knows who this man is, who, who is standing in front of him. He knows that Jesus is the Holy One of God. He knows him. He remembers him from, from his time before he fell, before he was cast out of heaven. Do we know Jesus? We know him as our savior, but do we really spend time in prayer and meditation to draw close to his heart, right? The demon said, I know you who you are. Can we say that about the Lord Jesus? I know you, I know you. A lot of people can say, I know of him or I know about him. But can we really say uh, that we know him, that we know him? And the only way to know him is through, through prayer and through the word of God. 
through spending time with him. Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, that I may know him, that I may know him. The Greek word for know here in Philippians 3.10 is ginosko, and it means to have an experiential knowledge of something. We know Jesus in our mind and in our heart, but do we know him in our daily experiences? Do we see God's hand at work even in the details of life? He knows our every step. He counts the hairs on our head, probably several times a day. Pray for a desire to know the one who knows every detail of your life. God knows everything about you. God knows everything about you. But do, do we take time to get to know him? The demons know him, the demons know him, but do we know him or do we only know about him or of him? Yeah, he's the one in church, right? He's the one we go to worship, but do we know him? Do we spend time with him in prayer? Do we, do we spend time in his word, getting to know him? So the demon says, I know you. He says here, verse 24, let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Are you come to destroy us? Are you come to send us to the lake of fire right now? I know you. I know you who you are. I know who you are. The Holy, the Holy One of God, right? He says, I know who you are. You're the Holy One of God. Can we say that we know that Jesus is the Holy One of God. I mean, we know it in word, but do we know it in our hearts? Do we really draw close to him in prayer and in his word? This demon knew him and he was on his way to the lake of fire. How much more is it important for us to get to know him and who he is? All right, we're gonna start verse 25 next lesson. But until then, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.